What's poppin' and welcome back to Maxify Theory, where today, as you may have guessed by the illustration that's on the board, I am again going to be talking about Bart's construction of the myth. Now today, it's going to be less of a dive into um, the structure of myth itself. I covered that a lot uh, in my previous video, uh, which was concerned uh, with this structure as it related to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but today we are talking about how Bart's construction of the myth relates to a different, very fundamental idea in film, in film theory, but in cinema in general, and that is the cinematic performance or the film performance. So today we are going to be talking about the myth of cinematic performance. So. Today, I'm going to try to explain this the best I can. Um, this is another idea that just like all of a sudden clicked with me. Um, I've been doing a lot of film theory readings. I've been doing a lot of thinking uh, like a film theorist lately. And um, I've been doing a lot of thinking, especially on the idea of performance and the idea of actors and on stardom. because. A lot of that is kind of intertwining in my life right now. Um, so today I want to try to walk you through the process, the thought process I was having, um, kind of deconstructing the idea of what cinematic performance really is. And so to try to explain this, first let me try to explain what I'm talking about. So I'm going to start here today. I'm going to start with the second signified. And so if you aren't familiar with um, how this system works, definitely see um, my other video I made um, relating this to the MCU. That will give you a great grounding in, in the fundamentals of this system. But today I'm starting, I'm going to do it kind of backwards from how I did it before. I'm going to start here and kind of get to here, which is the important part. So um, starting off. Uh, what we're focusing on is the myth is cinematic performance. And so what does this entail? What am I talking about here? Well, what I'm talking about here is is going to be rooted in, in this, which is the second signified, which is what this is made up of. What is cinematic performance? Well, Quite simply, um, cinematic performance is concerned with the actor's contribution, the actor or the star's contribution to a film. What are they doing? What is it that the actor does to contribute to filmmaking? Um, that's pretty simple. Um, that's a pretty simple way of describing what exactly we are talking about uh, when we approach the idea of cinematic performance. And so I think to explain what is essentially naturalized here, what is covered up um, when, when you apply the cultural meaning, um, what like initial meaning is covered up and why that's important, which I will get to later, which is kind of the thesis of this video, um, I think it's important to understand what cultural meanings have been placed on top of the actor's contribution. How do we as a culture understand the actor's contribution. And so there's a lot of things that go into this. And I think the two main ones are the star system and the award system. And so both of these systems, the star system, which constructs film actors as celebrities, as people um, like individuals uh, who you can who you can look to for their individual performances for maybe reliability in a performance and the award system uh, like the Oscar system the Academy um, which does basically the same thing but in a more organized format both of these do a lot to construct social ideologies around the film performance and so the things that these contribute to include stuff like praise of the individual or praise of like an individual performance, like someone saying, 
Oh, well, the Ben Affleck was very good in, in the Justice League as just a random example. Um, so it circulates a lot of individuality in how we approach stars and how we approach the film actor. And what else it does is it constructs a lot of ideology of intention where we praise stars for their specific performances like oh yeah he was really good in, in whatever movie that must have been and that kind of implies that that was the intention their intention was yes this is you know i'm going to make this movie great uh, with my performance and as i'll get into uh that is a lot of times not the case but it's a cultural thing that we as a culture through the star system and through the award system and similar stuff like that, those are just two examples. Um, a lot of our culture is what enables stuff like this to happen, um, which I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying that it is happening and I'm pointing it out. Um, but also um, individualism as well as um, intention. Now we know that our societal cultural systems are constructing ideologies of individualism and intention and praise of the individual star, praise of the celebrity, uh, praise of this person which is put onto the actor's contribution to make cinematic performance. Like, oh, that was such a great performance. That's where uh, just standard actor contribution becomes a performance. Um, so what is naturalized here? What is here that is covered up? What is the fundamental building block of the actor's contribution to a film? Well, this section's easy to answer. What exactly is it? Well, it's all of the pro-filmic events, all of the stuff that happened before the film was fully put together, uh, the stuff that happened in pre-production and production, essentially. So. And that's pretty simple to explain, really. It's basically the actor is there in front of the camera. The actor is filmed. That's as simple as it is. That's the basis of the actor's contribution is a pro filmic event of the actor is filmed doing whatever. And so what is signified by this? What is going to go into this box to create the actor's contribution? Well. This is kind of up for debate. Uh, it depends on, on what you want to look at as the actor being filmed. What does that mean? I guess that's up for some interpretation, but essentially the actor becomes part of the mise-en-scene, which is, if you don't know, just everything that is, I know there's an accent in there somewhere, um, everything that is placed in front of the camera and arranged by the production team to make the shot, make everything in the shot happen. And so when you get to the bottom of it, the actor is really just a part of that. And this gets into a lot of stuff that film theorist Edgar Moran talks a lot about. And so Edgar Moran's idea, Edgar Moran's idea is essentially that the actor is part of the mise-en-scene, and that's about the extent of their contribution. So I think Edgar Moran is essential to understanding this diagram, how I have constructed it. Edgar Moran's idea that the actor is essentially an object uh, that the director can play around with and that uh, the cinematographer can play around with and just kind of shoot is a huge idea here. Because comparing that to all of this praise that we give uh, in the cultural meaning, um, there's obviously a bit of a disconnect. And so another major point of Edgar Moran's, which he makes in The Star and the Actor, which is uh, an essential text by Edgar Moran, um, which I'm basing much of this on, um, he also says that the film performance, different from the dramatic, like theatrical performance, is based heavily in very minute expression. So much so that um, one of Moran's central ideas is that 
Um, film acting is not so much acting as thinking. Like, say I'm the director, uh, I have an actor, I'm like, okay, here's what the scene is. Rather than saying uh, what to act, just think this way and it'll come through, uh, through the camera so the audience will understand what you're, what you're trying to convey. You don't need to be hyper-expressionalistic like the, the dramatic actor who on stage has to reach the back of the room, right? And so that essential part of being a theatrical actor uh, is not there and is actually reversed in uh, film because you have, you, you have the close-up where facial tics and, and stuff like that are, are recorded and are up for interpretation. You don't need to be so expressionistic. And yes, maybe Nicolas Cage in Vampire's Kiss um, didn't get the memo on that, but that's intentional. That is intentional German expressionalism. Um, but um, getting distracted by Nicolas Cage aside, Edgar Morin's idea of the actor as an object just, it can seem a bit demeaning, especially as someone who uh, is a, a cinematic actor, uh, amateurly, as I am, um, it can definitely seem even offensive at, at points, like, what, you're demeaning the actor to where they're essentially just a statue, why not just use a mannequin at that point? And really, that is what Moran is saying, is um, there really is no need for expressionalism in acting. And uh, a great example of this is in the end of Queen Christina, the final scene of Queen Christina. Uh, if you haven't seen it, this is largely thought to be the most emotionally moving scene in the film. One of the most emotionally uh, revealing scenes of this entire culmination of dramatic melodrama. And Morin's proof here is that According to interviews with the director later, his directorial advice there was think of nothing. And so uh, watching this scene, thinking about how it was directed, what was instructed, um, Edgar Brand's point makes a lot of sense. But taking this into account, taking into account how little the actor's pro-filmic actions actually contribute to the film, at least according to Moran, and some other theorists as well, and I'll, I'll touch on that in a second. It really makes it clear how naturalized this has all been by the systems of our culture and the ideological groundings of what we think of when we think of actors and think of movie stars. And so, taking into account other film theory ideas it just furthers this point. Um, uh, Walter Benjamin also makes the same point as Moran in his um, work of art in the age of reproduction. He touches a lot on the idea of the film actor as uh, specified from the theatrical actor and how um, they've become more of an object. And you can also take into account Pascal Bonitzer's idea of subjectivity in film, where in film, according to Bonitzer, you are so the subject that you are meant to identify with, um, where you are subjectified when you watch a movie, is to the position of the camera, not to the positions of the actor so much. And yes, there is a huge level of identification going on with the actors, with the characters in the film, but first and foremost, you are asked as an audience member to identify with the camera, because that's where you're viewing the film from, that's where you're viewing the story from is the camera. And so this, taking this into account, taking into account uh, Bonitzer's idea, the role of the actor becomes even less so than it was after taking into account Morin's ideas. And so this just becomes all the more severe because you start to see this doesn't matter as much as we really feel like it should. And if we wanted to go even further, I need to extend this box because I'm running out of space. Um, going even further, we can address these two points directly by looking at film theory stuff. Um, the individual, um, that is highly debunked by the idea of um, death of the author. 
which was actually something uh, that Roland Bart came up with, who's also the father of this diagram. Um, but that addresses intentionality and individual individuality, rather, um, in writing, and how um, there really cannot exist an author whose whose intention, whose individual intention, um, comes through in a particular piece of writing, and um, the individual part of that uh, can come up again in uh, Peter Calero's work. He also touches on the myth of individuality. Um, but yeah, taking these two critics' deconstruction of, of these two ideas into account, it really makes it clear um, how like taken for granted this stuff is in our culture, in our society. Um, it's incredible, really, to, to understand all of this stuff, which I definitely didn't explain this enough. Uh, if you need further explanation, uh, all of these are available somewhere, uh, no doubt. So if you need further explanation, I would encourage you to check out the sources of these. Uh, Edgar Moran, uh, Bonitzer, Roland Barth, Death of the Author, um, Peter Calero, um, all incredible film theorists, all instrumental to the way we look at film theory, um, modern, uh, contemporarily, um, and I'm definitely not doing them justice by just writing their names in here and just briefly explaining uh, their ideas, but if you do have something of an understanding of these ideas, hopefully you can uh, understand how, just how naturalized um, the idea of actors' contribution has become, how these things have become so culturally ingrained within us and how the actor has been just constantly approached as this like undeniable talent and we see film actors film stars as just these unquestionably talented people and you see this when when a critic like myself says that that was a great performance he is a really good actor and in this movie i think he had some of his strongest performing he's ever done. Or, that was a bad performance, or I've, I see this all the time for upcoming movies, like talking about Batman. I think Robert Pattinson is going to give a great performance. What is a great performance? What does that mean? And we attribute that all to that one individual person, when really, if you think about it, a film is constructed by, I mean, if you've seen a Marvel movie, you've sat through 10 minutes of credits. That's 10 minutes of names scrolling by. All of those people were involved with constructing what came out as, as the performance. And so you can add that, too, to up here. Wow, I didn't spell that right. Um, you, can, you can add that there, too, because the... The film is not made by one person, even with something like Citizen Kane, where Orson Welles was, you know, taking over almost every position on the set. It's not all his performance. There's no way for it to all be his, even if he was in every single position. So in doing this, I hope I have answered the question of why is it that we, we attribute so much to actors as we do? And I think it probably is largely accessibility. Uh, we get to see their names. They, they circulate in culture through social media and things like that. Um, but it's also, it's based in cultural systems that have been in place for so long. It's just become part of our collective cultural ideology. And I think it's really important to point that out because the actor is not all they're made out to be. And it's very important to remember that in approaching film criticism. Sure, uh, understanding this can definitely be upsetting if you are uh, a film performer, like how I am. I guess I have to rethink um, using performer, uh, a thespian, like how I am. Um, it can definitely be upsetting to understand that uh, really uh, you're not making that much of an impact on this thing uh, if you deconstruct the culture around it. but. It can also be upsetting on a critical level because I am definitely guilty of this. I mean, look at almost every single one of my reviews, if not every single one of my reviews. I do at least one like praise of an actor that was in it or one like 
the opposite of praise on an actor that was in it. I'm not sure if I have an example on hand, but I'm definitely guilty of this too. And I probably will continue to be guilty of this, but I just think it's very important to keep in mind. Uh, so that way when you, when you watch my review videos and you see me saying like, oh, Ben Affleck did a great performance in, uh, in whatever movie. I don't know why I'm talking about Ben Affleck so much, but when I say things like that, you can understand that that's just a construction of the culture and that really what came across was, yes, a good performance, but at a more basic level, it really was just Ben Affleck being filmed. And all of the different stuff that I've talked about today made it so that I said the performance was good, where really it was probably just a good movie. Um, I think I'm thinking a lot about The Last Duel because that was a very moving film. So I hope you walk away from this video with a renewed perspective on the film performance and on the role of the actor in, in film and how that has become so such a naturalized part of uh, talking about movies and talking about films and how the actor as this great facet of filmmaking is really uh, rather debunkable and uh, rather rooted in cultural ideologies. And so I hope I explained all of this well enough. Like I said, um, look to these theorists for deeper discussions of such things. Um, and I hope this just helps broaden your view towards filmmaking in general too, because this stuff could easily be uh, attributed to the director's seat as well, easily. Uh, especially, I think, increasingly so. Uh, directors are attributed with so much um, power in the filmmaking process uh, other than taking into account uh, individualism and intention. Um, that kind of changes the way you can see that as well. So it definitely, hopefully, has changed the way uh, you can look at film, which is I think a good goal here on Maxify Theory, or at least something to strive for. And again, I should remind you, I am by no means an expert on any of this stuff. The experts are in this box. Uh, I'm out here. Uh, I'm definitely still a student of this crazy world of film theory, uh, this crazy world of filmmaking. So take everything with a bit of a grain of salt. And if I get some little things wrong, I don't think it's too big of a deal if you understand what I'm trying to say here. Anyways, I've been Max. This has been Maxify Theory. And I'll see you in the next one.